Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me at the start of a new campaign in Kaiser Redux in which we're playing as the Qing Imperial Authority, but I've already played a little bit off screen because we're going down a certain path, but if you'd like to read about the Year of the Rat, as well as encouraging export farming, and some new taxes, as well as an emergency meeting of the senior Azili members, please go right ahead, but Yi Guandao takes over Shandong, the esoteric millenarian sect known as Yi Guandao, have reportedly taken over the Shandong province, ousting our erstwhile governor Zhang Zongcheng. While initially concern ran ra high that this sect would create chaos in her lands, level headed prevailed, pointing out Zhang's well documented Feng Shan loyalty. The code is isolated, and once the chaos of the south is stabilized, we may be able to attack them, though this could cause unrest with a sizable number of adherents of the religion as created within her territory. Quite interesting. Now, getting this path. With uh, for Yi Guangdao for the Qing is not super easy. After this, we need to continue with the normal Manchu restoration, and we need to have Puyi seek support from Tian Ren during the clue potting. So, potting, potting, plotting. If you're talking about Long Guang breaking free, please go right ahead. Rebel scum, and widespread rioting breaks out. Well, maybe you're worried about that as well. Please go right ahead. Oh boy, so the governor's con contact our nation, and Hunan seeks to cease from the league. Dealing with the unrest. So our decision to stay neutral in the league collapses please nobody and angered everyone. We need to quickly suppress unrest before the situation becomes untenable. So this group, um, I definitely want to support them so we can help them out. So, oh. Well. Never mind. That was really fast. I should play the left game sometime. And Liang Guang Clique as well sometime. So this is the war stage one. Terrible news. Absolutely terrible news. Wow, we have no political power, do we? Uh, so we have the army reform thing to do. If you want to read about managing German influence, please go ahead. It is what it is. We're just kind of hanging out here. Just kind of hanging out. Oh, and there goes those guys. <clears throat> Monty Restoration. Well, we'll see about that. Um, you guys are at war. Now I definitely want to support you guys. We're going to in one division, huh? You guys are 10. And then you guys are 10 with recon. So let's send the horses. Just to help them out as much as possible. Which hopefully be a good thing. Can we send any 29, huh? So what do we send 10 and 10? It's not much, but it might work. Oh, uh, yeah, I might want to do that area. And then buddy up on the bombers, get up to 9. There you go. That'd be pretty nice. See what we can do about this. Overthrow the bet. Oh. We need to place the bet sometime, too. Well, let's slow it down just a little bit and double check the guy that I'm looking at right now off screen. Do not support them. Yeah. During coup, coup plotting. Yeah. Cool. Anything else here? Not really. We just have no political power. Let me bring it to East if you want to read about that. Please go ahead. Hey, 10 more political power. Thank you. Hopefully, we're getting some good air XP as well. Hopefully. There you go. Nice. Now, all you'll be led by Field Marshal Zheng Bai Li. Um, let's go on the front line somewhere down here. We'll see what we can do. Go with Unyuning Defender because you can. Just because you literally can. Oh, we need some fuel. Oh, that doesn't help. Uh, fuel. Afghanistan is a little spot of fuel. Thank you, sir. Oh, that's fine. Whatever. Oh, everyone about department, uh, Armament Department seeks asylum. Please go right ahead. All friends are always welcome here. Yes. Whispers of discontent. In the weeks following Wu's decision not to intervene in the left collapse, small groups of across the political spectrum began to gather in secret. Initially limited to criticizing Wu's inaction, the worsening violence on the streets led many to bring up revolt. Social networks between these groups have allowed a shaky coalition to develop, comprised of Manchu nobles, cadets of the Baoding Academy, reformers in the Nsera, and some Zili generals annoyed at Wu's inaction. This loose group has begun to speak clandestinely with one another and to plot to overthrow Wu and restore the emperor to some degree of power. Keep an eye on this. You never know what might happen. Oh, cool. Now they're starting to attack us as well. How sad. Famine breaks on Siege 1, of course. Pretty normal. Pretty darn normal. Good. Get more army XP. No, we're not really getting that much, but I'll take whatever we can grab. A clandestine meeting. Oh, boy. 
In the basement of a shady Beijing bar, traditionally used as a cover for revolutionary activities, a strange coalition of individuals dedicated to overthrowing Wu Paifu and his rule over China has gathered versus Pu Xi. The Emperor's brother and a general in the army, one of the few non zili generals allowed to command significant numbers of troops. Next to him sits Y.C. James Yen, a leading intellectual and head of the Ansera. Across from him sits Feng Ziyang and Ling Ben, two Baoding cadets, scarcely older than 25, the final member of this meeting is Zili General Li Bingzi. A monarchist, Bingzi, claims to have assembled a coalition of Zili generals disgruntled with Wu's inaction over the last few months. This sucks that you got encircled. Realizing that they're unable to beat the Zili clique on their own with their limited military resources, the plotters decide they must ask the leader of a neighboring warlord clique for assistance. After much deliberation, they chose Shangxi, uh, Zeng, Tianren, and Shandong. Yes, Tianren, yes please. Uh, they still might lose here, but we'll see what happens. And let the coup succeed during a deal with the unrest focus. So we just have to wait. Black Monday, why so Zhang accepts. Honor teacher Zhang is accepted the plu coup plotters request for aid. He agrees to deploy his troops should the Zia clique not be fully destroyed in the coup. At the same time, however, he will pro probably demand concessions once Pu has been restored to his proper position. Excellent. Nice. Uh, crap. I want to try to Sigma, but there's no there. Liu Jiang takes control of Sichuan. Grave news, Cyrus spills out Liu Jiang has defeated her ally Yang Sen in Sichuan. While this is a major loss to the Zili clique, the province is industrially poor and military overstretched. Should they join any opposing faction, we'll crush them. Darn. Just darn. Ominous troop movements. Oh no! Unusual troop movements have been reported from Shandong province over the last few days. It appears that large mobs of Yi Guangdao militiamen are preparing for some sort of military action on our borders. With their informants reporting that supplies and equipment are being stockpiled near the mountain passes out of the peninsula. Honor teacher Zhang Tianren of the Yang Yi Guangdao certainly is no ally of the Zili clique, and an attack on territory would not be out of the question for him. What's going on here? Dispatch more spies? We have more pressing matters to attend to, of course. Yeah, we're definitely gonna. This group's definitely gonna lose here unless we do something really quickly. But if I, if I have to do stuff off screen to make it work for us, then so be it. I'm not opposed to using cons commands. There's a lot of divisions here. Holy crap. It's becoming a cavalry leader, which is very nice. Six Asylum? Ah, uh, whoops. Hello. I didn't click on either one, but whatever. Level 7, not bad. Can't build or anything. Can't do very much except deal with unrest. Seems like a very Chinese thing to do is just kind of wait around. And train, 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 train. Oh, now they're forcing the attack, huh? Do we have enough guns? Yeah, we do, so you know what? That's okay. Are these horses? Oh, we got the garrisons already. National cavalry. Um, do we have enough artillery? We do. Do we have engineers? We don't. Okay, then. Okay. Let's see what we can do about that. Oh, this template's locked. God dang it. Well, the other ones will be fine, then. Mysterious occurrences. Roaring news. It appears that over the last few days, anti Zili and anti German pamphlets have been discovered and distributed amongst some of our troops. When asked where they received this from, none were able to give a straight answer, with most things disappeared overnight. Even more worrying, several Zili generals have dropped out of contact with Lu Yang over the last few hours, notably including Li Bingyi, whose monarchist sympathies are well known. Even worse, Baoding Military Academy appears to have been abandoned overnight, and communications with far flung parts of the Empire have been interrupted due to widespread radio and telegraph outages. What's going on here? Oh no, what could be happening? Passive armor XP gain, Wu Pai Fu, army exercises, not bad. These guys are definitely trying to kill themselves off, which is fine with me. Don't get me wrong, that's fine with me. <clears throat> we need some light tanks, though. A little by one, that's fine. Aluminum. Oh, actually, well, there. Oh, look at that. Refugees from Sichuan, we're going to about that. Please go right ahead. Refugees, that's fine. We lose some political power, get more weekly manpower and stability. Yeah, I'm kind of okay with that. A summons to Beijing. While Wu is attempting to process alarming developments that have occurred over the last few days, an urgent telegram has arrived from Beijing. Cao Kun and Wu have been summoned to a meeting with the Emperor of the State of the Country. Widespread riots are still a daily occurrence, and while the Emperor technically has the constitutional prerogative to summon his president, this has never occurred. While Wu may sense a trap, Cao Kun has already informed the Emperor that he that himself and Wu will, will present themselves to his Imperial Majesty later that week. Don you, Cao Kun. Don, Don, Don you. They prepare to meet Puyi. After arriving from Luoyang, 
Wu berated Cal for essentially inviting them into a trap. Still, the jaded marshal is not one to go into a meeting like this without a trump card up his sleeve, as the two men prepare to enter the hall. Wu orders his bodyguards to wait outside the entrance to the chambers. The ceremonial bodyguards are unarmed except for the traditional swords, and Zili soldiers have hidden pistols within their pockets. They enter the hall, and guards rush to kill, uh, rush into the hall. As the two men enter and kneel before the emperor, around a dozen heavily armed Manchu guards rush into the room, surrounding the, surrounding the emperor. They move forward and attempt to arrest the two men, while Pu Yi flees the room. Upon hearing the commotion, Wu's bodyguards quickly outside dispatch the ceremonial guards and rush in, while Wu and Cao duck behind pillars to avoid getting hit. Bullets fly back and forth among the ancient pillars of the hall, smashing priceless artifacts and wounding Cao Kum. When the bullets stop, however, one side emerges victorious. The coup, coup succeeds? The coup succeeds. The emperor asserts himself. Right, we want the coup to succeed, right? Yeah. Pu Yi nervously re enters the room, gazing down at the bullet ridden bodies of the former Jade Marshal's mentor, President Cao Kun. Oh, look at that. That's really nice. Pu Yi and another small group of Manchu guardsmen enter as well, all carrying some machine guns. Dearest brother, I believe it's time for you to make a speech. Pu Yi turns from the corpses and looks at Pu Yi. Ah, he begins, his voice uncertain. I'm not sure if I can do that. Pu Yi is about to say something when General Li Bing Zi, leader of the Zili deserters, bursts in the room. My lord, the city is secure. He says Cao Tong almost to the ground, facing Pu Yi, but Zheng Bali and several other Zili generals have retreated to Liang Yang. They're planning to launch a campaign to destroy us and liberate Beijing. Pu Yi moves over to Pu Yi and whispers into his ear, You are the emperor now, you must act like one. Pu Yi nervously attempts to gather himself. I, the Zhuang Tong Emperor, son of heaven, formally proclaim any members of the Zili clique who do not swear fealty to me by tomorrow more. His voice cracks and he's forced to say to himself, Who do not do so by tomorrow noon will be traitors to the Great Qing. Death to the traitors. Oh, look at this guy's hat. I love it. Prosperity of the League dissolves. Following the recent upheavals, the Prosperity of the League has abruptly dissolved, signing a hostile atmosphere with many of their prominent lobbyists leaving for Tianjin. Although the German legation remains in Beijing, they have cut themselves off from any uh, government contact, robbing us of German military support and industrial support. The people, however, are overwhelmingly in favor of this move and are praising the new government for ridding itself of foreign influences. We don't need them. Nice. And read about the Manchu Restoration, please go ahead. Nice. I've never seen this tree before. I've actually never done this before, so that's actually really cool. Secure North China Plain. While the forces lord of the coup control Beijing and Iris surrounding the Baoding Military Academy, the rest of our territory remains under the control of the traitor Zili warlords. We need to first secure the northern frontier, eliminating the Zili garrisons there before turning our eyes south. Form an emergency government. So the thing is to do not form it. And this has got to get the 30% somehow. So... <clears throat> Imperial coup? I've never seen the coup before, which is awesome. Goodbye, General Wu. Oh, well, we need a general now. Um, you're so low anyways. I'm just going to choose probably this guy. Ah, Puji. Welcome back, Puji. You don't need to be offensive eventually. Anyway, so. And what if we force defense? Oh, wow, look at that. Why, well, so never trying to be worried about that. Please go right ahead. Oh, wow, look at that too. Infantry, thank you. Whee! Quite an adventure. There you go, spread out. It'll be fine for now. Our allies in aid. Our noble ally in Tian Yuan has sent a great deal of money to help us defeat the traitor Zili remnants hiding in the south. Thank you. Instruction one is great. How about we get some actual modern guns, or contemporary guns, I should say, at the very least. Wang Lingji, please learn, please learn. So do not do this focus. And then I guess we'll go, come over here. Rebuild a command structure. A civil war against the Zili remnants left our high command in tatters. Few of those remain have much loyalty, and divisions exist independent of the overall order of battle. We must immediately reorganize our force if we wish to avoid initiate inviting an attack. Which is fine. You guys still training? They're almost done. Oh, the Lotus is fighting now, huh? All right. I just want to focus on defense. Can you actually win there? Busan Treaty? No, we cannot. Just hold, man. Just hold. Oh, look at that. That's a little better now. No, not you. You guys. Oh, crap. Whee! It's fine. Just kind of hold the entire front. If you can. I wish we could edit these divisions, though, man. Really wish we could. Are we still bombing them? Yeah, we are. That's good. Do you want a slight amount of damage? He, Jean, rides in Beijing. He, Jean, fled Hunan after the defeat of his ally Zhang Heng Ti there. He has now arrived in Beijing and been granted our protection. Great. You can actually go in there. That'd be really good if we could go there and there, but we'll see. 
I mean, guys want to take combat with them. I mean, there's only militia, but they might be pretty thick militia soldiers, so. so they're trying to import more fuel. Then again, we were trying to train these guys too, so. Go to Dubai? So now the Navy shouldn't be taking up any. So the Army's taking a lot. There we go. There we go. Collapse of UBD. Julius IV elected. Hmm, you still might be able to win, maybe not, we'll see. Oh, what is this? Push to the Yellow River. First steps of the reconquest involve pushing to the Yellow River and destroying all the garrisons up to the banks. Once completed, we can focus on the heart of the campaign, Luo Yang. Nice. There you go. 14 days. Foreigner against foreigner. Look to our past. I kind of want to do look to our past. Instead of turning to the foreigners, let's instead look to the past for inspiration on how to reform a military. The true and true methods of the warlord era are still effective and will allow us to destroy our enemies. Nice. Yeah, just hold there. That's fine. Can you guys actually win there? Yeah, I actually might, might be able to win there. That'd be good. Victory! Reports have returned from the Imperial Palace that the troops have reached the Yellow River. The scattered Zili garrisons around Beijing proved to be a little match for the Bao Ding led armies, and General Zai Tao's Manchu assisted in hiring retreating Zili troops as they attempted to flee to Lu Yang. Many troops simply deserted to our forces as the thought of serving a leaderless army with a little concentrated political backing does not appeal, uh, really appeal. Our forces are now ready to begin assault on Luo Yang. Wu Paipu's stronghold is currently being defended by our forces under General Jiang Bali. Who is second in command? Securing this fortress will be the beginning of the end of the Zili clique. Long live the second, the son of heaven. Assault on Luo Yang. It was Wu Paifu's headquarters before the defeat, and now many Zili generals have retreated here, bringing many of their personal militias with them. Securing this fortress will be a monument monumental victory for our cause. Nice. And right now, we're what? Social conservatives? Yeah. Rebuilding our command structure. Following the purge of many senior members of the Zili clique, our army has been left without much of a uh, command structure. It's fallen on Li Bingji, one of the few Zili deserters, and two Asian Goryeo princes. Zai Tao and the Emperor's brother Puji to reform the Imperial Command structure. It was not been an easy task as Wu and his cronies essentially did away with a modern divisional structure based on meritocratic promotion in favor of cronyism and nepotism. While the reforms take time to implement, they decided to fill out a thin roster of senior commanders with Feng Zhiyan and Liang Ben, two young Baoling cadets who helped overthrow the Zili. Though inexperienced, with any luck, they'll learn quickly. Excellent. To our past. Yeah. We need to win the Civil War first, so that's fine. Teacher becomes a master. Ah. To our past, my friends. <clears throat> uh, Prince Yui requests commission. Asian girl Yai Zhong, Zhong, Prince Yui, formerly naval minister during the cabinet of 1911, has come to us with a request. Following the promotion of a young coup backers from the Baoding Academy, he requests a full naval commission. While it's true many of his admirals have lingered Zili connections, most are loyal to us. Zai Zhong, despite having traveled extensively to study foreign navies, has never actually commanded a ship in battle and made her skeptical of actual naval prowess. Promote him. Telegram rather more info from Luo Yang, confirming that her troops are victorious in the storm in the walls of the fortified city, following hours of concentrated artillery bombardment. Loyal troops cross the river in impromptu barges, sustaining heavy fire. Once ashore, however, they quickly secured control of her beachhead, allowing more and more of her troops to land and begin attacking Zili units garrisoned in the city. Fighting amongst the ancient grotto and temples that they dot the city, our troops eventually stormed the Zili headquarters, killing Zhang Bai Li. Oh no! Other generals managed to escape, and the Zili troops have scattered throughout the surrounding countryside, looting and pillaging even as they flee our forces. Along with the Son of Heaven. Mob up isolated garrisons. With the fall of Luo Yang, Luo Yang, we can focus on destroying isolated garrisons across former Zili territory. This will be time consuming, but securing Zhangji, Hubei, and other provinces will be essential in consolidating our rule. In the final push, the last remnants of the Zili have retreated to Wuchang, where they defeated the KMT a decade ago. The time, this time, they will not be so lucky. We will destroy these traitors and ensure that China is ours. Nice. Assess doctrines. The rapidly changing face of modern warfare has necessitated us to take a long, hard look at our military doctrine. Should we continue to use plans drawn up by the Zili, or tend to devise plans of our own? No, I wanted to uh, use these guys too. Nice. There you go. Victory in the South. The last few weeks have seen intense fighting across southern reaches of our territory as the diehard supporters of Wu Pai Fu and the Zili clique were hunted down and destroyed. Especially vicious was the fighting on all routes leading to Wuhan. And as the last remnants of the Zili command prepared to organize a desperate last stand in the ancient city, uh, with the isolated garrisons destroyed, we can turn our eyes now on the securing the city and destroying the Zili once and for all. Long live the Son of Heaven. Oh, we're actually doing okay here. Look at that. Victory in Wu Chang. 
Or this one. Dire news of Wuhan garrison has reported a flotilla of barges heading up rather to stage one. Flying the Japanese flag, it appears that they are carrying large amounts of grain. It will be very easy to hide guns under a layer of grain stacks. We can demand the ship stop for search, though this greatly offend the Japanese government, potentially cause international incident. Let him pass. Victor Nuchang. In a final all assault victory, or assault for our forces, bolstered by ranks of Zili deserters, finally stormed Wuhan, destroying the remaining Zili forces, capturing or killing many senior Zili generals. With victory finally secured, we can now start to focus on rebuilding our country and rearing it from both the ravages of conflict we just endured and the decades of rampant corruption we were subjected to under the Zili. Long live the Son of Heaven. Awesome. A fat 20% more political or stability? Yes, please. Yes, sir. Oh, look at that. Oh, 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 look at that. I, how do you have your political power? Getting more army XP is going to be super important. As much as I want more artillery attack and defense. Army offense, defense. I want to get more daily army XP. As much as I want to get down here, too. Um, getting more army XP is going to be super crucial for us. Uh, so we can continue army reforms. We, we got to have that. What are we doing down here? Still bombing? Do doing okay? Nice. Just look to our past. <laughs> and they get support up for the Ying Dao up to 30%. So, we don't want to take this one. Pick the YCP. The Manchu Party, huh? The Fall on Debt. Chinese Century, that's kind of cool. I've never done these paths. I definitely want to do these paths someday. Probably do an actual Kaiser Reich, though. A new benefactor. Zheng Ren, yeah. Probably a new benefactor. A coup that destroyed the Zili clique was not accomplished alone. Like it or not, in order to claim a country from the despotic warlords, we had to cut a deal with the local powers in the region. Now we must invite them to Beijing and see what they want in exchange for their support. Pretty much, man, pretty much. And then we'll set auctions as well. So, and this is a guy we want, so. Zhang Tianren. Although under mass of Yang Yi Guangdao sect, Zhang Tianren commands. An enormous amount of cloud among the followers of his religion. His desired position in the government is unclear, but it appears that he is willing to lend support of the Yi Guangdao in return for unknown concessions. Oh, as much as I want to get that one. We can't quite do that yet. So, ever since the coup that toppled Zili uh, clique, the future of our government remained uncertain. Now, however, the warlord who helped us overthrow Wu is set to depart for Beijing. We expect much of their agenda to be revealed. Welcome, under teacher Zhang, to Beijing. Awesome. Yeah, get to the one on the right. Yep. Yeah. Oh, wait, we can get Ungan Stanbag. Oh, well, that's really cool, actually. That's actually really awesome. Yeah, Yi, Guao, Yi Guangdao influences. With his new position in the government, Zhang Tianren has begun to expand the Yi Guangdao's power and influence within a country. Whilst his bolstered our legitimacy and popularity among followers of the faith, it's not clear who they are more loyal to, the government, our government, or to Tian's faith. Nice. A little bit ahead of time, we can grab some of that already and come over here and grab that too. Awesome. You guys are doing really really well now. Good job, guys, so far. Good job. Good job, Arinos. Antigolus Victorious. Very cool, very cool. Any new field marshal? Eventually. I hate all these people who are connected. I hate politically connected people. It's not a political statement. Uh, actually, it might be, but whatever. <clears throat> the ceremonial role. Um, during the Zili regime, the emperor's ceremonial rituals were largely silent and ignored. Zhang Tianren has proposed or introducing these rites to the forefront of the imperial government, instilling patriotic fervor in the population. Oh, look at this. Oh, that's so nice to see. I definitely want to go to early mobilization next, probably. Go in there. Deleting these enemy divisions will be so important. A good amount of it. Yeah, air XP too. You have to force the attack. Division check and core territory. It's not bad. So how do you get more influence? Because we get 10%, 5% more. There you go. Nice. Keep going on him. I don't care what the costs are. Gather the dynasties. A major part of Zhang's reform plans involve gathering the former ruling dynasties of China together to legitimize the Puyi's rule. He has begun to send out invitations, and over the next few weeks, the royals will arrive in Beijing. 
I gotta do that too. And then since this is both only .06, I'm just gonna go do artillery. So that'll be good. Yeah, don't worry about it. Force it. Oh my god, this is such a mess. You can almost cut these guys off. Take half eye, hefy. You can liberate these guys and start on these guys yourself. So killing off three enemy divisions would be super, 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 super important, though. Nice. Very good, very good. And you guys go there too. Nice. Less than a million manpower, but that's fine. Bap, bap. Are there any decisions to get more support here? No. Super events, no. Hmm. Ceremonial rights. Gather the dynasties. Come grab artillery. Yeah. Keep forcing it. And then bolster imperial legitimacy. During the like, decade-long Zili regime, few thought the emperor was any more than a puppet blocked away in the Forbidden City. Now, however, with the backing of a new constitutional system and the Yi Guang Dao faith, people are starting to see the emperor as legitimate once again. It's not terrible there. Um, we have 84. Hey, do we get it? Not yet. We're going to get there. I might as well go with more attack. We'll see. Good. Le legitimate emperor. Our efforts have been successful. <clears throat> The emperor is now regarded as the legitimate ruler of China by every peasant and farmer. The Ying Yi Guangdao have consolidated power in Shandong and declared the province to be fully integrated into a nation. The dynasties arrived. Over the last few days, the Marquis of Extended Grace, Duke Min Cheng, and the other various descendants of the old imperial dynasties have arrived in Beijing. One by one, they filed past the emperor, silently bowing to pay their respects. In a novel first, a court photographer has been tasked with capturing each of these submissions, and they will be distributed as propaganda to both prove the legitimacy of the emperor and wrote any support for a non matu ruling family. Excellent! I should go up there first. It's actually really awesome. Um, attack and defense. Oh, we need more command power first, so we gotta wait. It's not terrible either. Russia, not their ambitions. Go in. Good job, guys. Really good job. These guys are doing great now. I was getting worried there for. Oh! Oh! Well, what did you look at that? Awesome. Awesome, 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 awesome. Who's currently at war? Oh, who now wants to go to war with us, huh? Towns are killing each other. Afghan, no, no, no. Uh, actually, the Italians. Would you like some? I don't think we can send volunteers, can we? Oh, we can. Well, we don't like total, so we'll support you probably instead. You are the pretty good division. Oh, whoops. We're going to send one. We'll send the green guy. By green, we're just regulars. There you go. Alright, that's cool. Oh. Oh, God. God dang it. Man. Can we actually join the wars? If they're going to start losing, we're going to join the war. So if not... We'll just help them out right now. Do there have to be a peace for this, though? Ah, screw it. We'll join in then. Now I can't do that one yet. Oh, completely. Shandong is a model province. The only parting is uh, 70%. I don't understand how we're supposed to get more influence, though. Let's test the doctrines, though, at the very least. There you go. I'll do that. Oh. There you go. A little better. And then you guys do this. Go up to 100. Go up to 100. And there you go. Whoopsie. Now there you go. Second Northern Expedition. Continue Army Reform. Uh, propaganda would be actually really nice to get. Yeah, because it's American Civil War. Seriously, how do we get more influence here? If I have to use Cons Commands, then so be it. I don't really care if I have to, but... Um, I always use the pocket switch because it's so good. More defense is really nice too, though. Even more army XP. Just loads and loads and loads of army XP. Go in. <clears throat> Go in if you can. Yeah. The left game to you. Actually. I don't know what any paths they have. I've, I have played left game to you once. Should play them again sometime, though. Nice. 
Nice, nice. Success doctrines after that one, then what? I have a feeling we have to wait for whoever else to choose whatever else is. Um, I don't know. I really don't know. I hope I didn't screw this up. I might have, though. This guide is not very grandiose. United provinces of China. Oh, yep. We're going to have a big old fight on our hands eventually. What do you guys have? Uh, there we go. This one, definitely. Primary reforms. Approved roads to Beijing. Maybe we just have to wait for these guys to actually do stuff. Destroy drug, drug dealers. Uh, back to the basics. Victory in the south. Okay, so I have to wait for that one. No? I have no idea. Court of the nobles. Buy back to Xinjiang. Maybe we have to uh, support social conservatism. No. Maybe there's an event I need to fire. Maybe I'll, I'm maybe I'll just fire the event. I don't know. This is it's so not explained well how to do it. <clears throat> so, oh, northwestern conflict, huh? Send small arms. Send volunteers. You have man pressure. Send some of those guys. Fall of Rome. All right. Still slowly winning. Hey, we won. Nice. Good job, guys. I don't want to give them everything, and I want port access. This might be really bad to do, but yeah, I'll give you some of this too. They return to oh, they return to Latin. Okay, well, all right, I can do. I, I'm okay with that. Mm, I'm hoping we get some more stuff. Integrate the GMN concession. That's pretty much. Might as well, right? Might as well. We'll probably go with offense. Maybe. We'll see. Um. In the meantime, wait to get to thirty percent. I guess we just have to wait. There we go. Go with offense for now. Assessing doctrines. The major issue facing the military rebuilders is the issue of doctrine. The Zealand were hesitant to innovate instead of relying on old but well tried and tested doctrines. As China modernizes, though, we may be forced to fundamentally shift our doctrine. What direction should we take our forces in? Spare firepower. We're going to go spare firepower. Artillery. Definitely artillery. I'm, I am I don't know what's going on. I don't know why this is not firing, but we'll see in just a little bit. The Yi Guangdao spring are trapped. For too long, we've allowed the slinking rats known as the Yi Guangdao fester and proliferate. Their insistent chattering and scheming gnawing away at the very foundations of our civilization. It's long been the time to put an end to these vermin, but it's now it's too late. Despite our boasts and empty promises in which we swore to uproot these dangerous cultists, we've instead sat upon our laurels and allowed this to tumorous movement to metasize, sealing our fate in the fated trend itself. As the war time adage goes, loose lips sink ships, and it would seem our, righty, our mighty nation is no different. With loud mouth princes easily bribe military officials leaking information and supplies the Yi Guangdao, Xiang Tian, the matriarch son Zhu Zhen, and the millenarian cultists have mustered enough strength to be able to overthrow the nascent Qing government, shackling the dragon throne and all of China in the process, striking our regime while our backs were turned, paying attention to more important matters such as planning the emperor's banquet and crushing opium grow operations in the west. These fanatics have begun to completely seize the apparatus of state. Storming the capital and taking the emperor hostage, the zealots made short work of the palace guards, with many being paid off beforehand to not even be on duty at the time of the attack. With a shocking and sudden victory, the Yi Guangdao have immediately begun dismantling our administration and instituting their own while the majority of the nation is none the wiser. With the capital and the emperor now in the hands of Zhang Tianren, all of China shall be at the mercy of these cultists. All of China must now bow to the persistent way, which <clears throat> I'm not supposed to, sure if we're supposed to wait any longer. But this has been cr complete crap. I mean, apparently, I read one of the, like, on the Reddit. Apparently with this Yi Guangdao influences, um, we're supposed to get decisions to increase uh, popularity here. I, I don't understand what the devs are thinking. I'm not, maybe this is bugged, because there's literally nothing here. Literally nothing here. I mean, there's no saying, sign saying that we get anything here at all. So, I, I don't know what the devs were thinking about this, but it wasn't very good. So I had to force it to do National Populists. So at least now we can do something here instead of doing this waiting, waiting, waiting for no reason. 
the teacher becomes a master. With the new order established and the emperor subject to Yi Guang Dao's de facto authority, it's time to come to bring her line of ways to China. Infiltrate the military. Oh, versus co covert Zili monarchists. Though the emperor himself has many supporters, they are not necessarily supporters of the Yin Guan Dao. This makes a rule controversial among their numbers. To combat this ire, a few Yin Guan Dao missions will be created to show that them they were not so different and to convert them to our ways. We have ways of making them see the light. <clears throat> um, I'll be pretty good to do as well. Entrench faith. Faith is undoubtedly one of the most important pillars in life of every man. Unlike the Manchu princes and the pompous Zili generals, we should pledge faith in everyday life on all occasions. Mm. Whether in the affairs of governance or the everyday life of our people. This way, we can still lead the whole country forward, unified by indestructible and pure faith, all under heaven for the Yi Guan Dao. But yeah, I'm really disappointed that devs. I mean, there's nothing here. Maybe we're supposed to wait even longer, but for what? Like, we didn't even get like daily increase of like national popular support. So, with the 18th patriarch Zheng Tianren, once known only as the lowly Kui Xiang, now lording over the heartland of China, the destiny of our heavenly realm now lies in the hands of the father of the Yi Guan Dao. Long working behind the scenes to support Yu Yi, Puyi's claim to the throne in order to further his own ambitions and millenarian goals, the Shi Zun, or honored teacher Zheng Tianren, is expected to proclaim his loyalty to the faltering Qing dynasty, but with his newfound position of wide re reaching power and influence, perhaps there is an alternative to bending to the foolish Zhongtang Emperor. Uh, Xiao Zhi. Well, lack of control really sucks. Tian is ancient Chinese concept of heaven or the celestial aspect of the cosmos and has persisted for millennia throughout Chinese history and culture. This heavenly ideal uh, secured the authority of the mandate of heaven as well as bound the myriad faiths of the Chinese peoples and now it forms the basis of the doctrine of the Yi Guan Dao. From our people, our nation's old name of Tian Chao means heavenly dynasty to get the concept of Xian Xia or Tian Xia or all under heaven. That forms the basis of our sex ideology, to even take the spiritual name of Zhang Tian himself, this heavenly concept embodies everything but who we are as both the Chinese people and as members of the Yi Guan Dao. This blessing is even supported by the masses, for it is they who claim our own patriarch to be the reincarnation by, of both Yu Hai, the Bodhisattva of Moon Wisdom, and Zhi Gong, the illustrious Buddhist monk birthed from the soul of an Arhat. With this mass supporting mandate and a millennium long history behind him, Zhang Tianren has toyed with the idea of declaring a new dynasty to cleanse and purify China once and for all, a heavenly dynasty. This Tian Empire would rise to the name a new emperor for China, supported by the mandate of heaven itself professed by the heavens itself and whispered to by the patriarch uh, and his wife and his wise and beloved wife, the first matriarch's son, Suizem. Serving as a guide of the new monarchy, the Yi Guan Dao could be free to fully implement the millenarian goals without obstacles, though it would also likely face heavy resistance at first from the Qing loyalists. However, if he so wished, Zhang Tianren could simply bend the knee to Puyi as he has for ages while continuing to pull the puppet monarch strings from the shadows. The choice now allows the patriarch alone. All of China belongs under heaven. The Tian Empire shall rise. Our destiny will and always shall lie with the Qing. The rise of the heavenly empire sounds a lot, like a lot more fun to me. <clears throat> With the patriarch's decision to abandon the failed and decadent Qing dynasty in favor of his own vision for China, the Tian Empire has formally been proclaimed. All across China, society is being built, rebuilt as a monument of hedonism, and grandeur built by the late Qing are replaced with something more tasteful, more pious, and more fitting to the austere yet illustrious legacy of our heavenly ancestry, and future as well as the ideas of the Yi Guan Dao. However, before a new empire and dynasty can truly begin as we move to make all truly under heaven, a first emperor must be proclaimed. In order to assure legitimacy in the eyes of those more skeptical to our plans, many have suggested that a patriarch crown a candidate of Ming blood in order to secure a position. Before us are three fitting candidates, the Duke of Yangcheng, an heir to the Confucius Long Okong, Ling Yi, the Marquis of Extended Grace, and Ming heir Zhu Yu Xiang, an easily influenced noble child Zhu Rong Yi. The first two have verifiable connections to the Ming Dynasty and are respected nobles that would go a long way to secure political stability and support base. While the child is said to have been descended from the first Ming Emperor Zhu Yuanzheng, and although this has never been fully verified despite centuries of the child's family upholding the claim, however, his young age would also make a far more ideal puppet than the two noblemen. For a child's mind is always easy to mold. Alternatively, Zheng, uh, Tianran's most zealous supporters always, supporters and even his own wife, the first matriarch of Sun. Su Zhen, have whispered in his ear for him to proclaim himself as heavenly emperor instead, forging a new dynasty entirely free from the failures of the past, though he could also even coronate his own wife, our own, our order's matriarch, in order to seem less power hungry. Though either of these decisions would likely anger many with all of China in his grasp, there's not many who can truly do anything to oppose his decision. The final verdict and the fate of all of China rests squarely on the hands of Zheng Tianren, the Duke, Marquis, Child, Patriarch, I think we'll go with the Patriarch. I mean, it just makes sense. Oh. Look at this guy. Still disappointed the dads, but then again, what else is new? Uh, we're also still trying to do this as well, so... Tian Empire. 
Alright. A new heavenly capital with a new sovereign of our infantile heavenly empire now crowned. We must decide upon a new capital for the nation. Across China, there exist many ancient and hollow cities that would serve as their precious capital, but only one can be the true center of power. What city uh, shall come to house the new sovereign of the Tian Empire? Dragon Throne. Nanjing. Why would I want Nanjing? I mean, then again, are we not, we're not together. Jiling. Tianjin. Jinan. Jian. I'll see there, why not? So now we get more national pocket support if we really wanted to. Which, at this point, I mean, I want to, but... Let's go with that one first. <coughs> also, we're still doing army reforms as well. A banner for the Empire of Heaven. Uh, the Tian Empire has been reclaimed, and its empire has been declared, but our new empire still needs one thing, a banner to rally behind. Before us are three main designs, a black banner adorned with a bronze script character for Tian, meaning heaven and the namesake of the empire. A black banner said adorned with the symmetric symbol of our millenarian order, the Ying Guang Dou. Or the red banner adorned with a dragon holding the symbol of celestial balance from Chinese folklore. Which flag shall come to become the hallmark of our new heavenly kingdom as we march to place all under heaven? Symbol of our order, the Yang Dao? New design, I'm not really sure. I, I, I honestly don't really care too much. I, I want to know how we can annex these guys too, but... Uh... Wider Chinese culture, huh? What is this one like? Oh, it's not bad. It's kind of different. Oh, hello. 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 I was not expecting that. Ja Lama. Are they in any sort of faction? No, they've... they got a lot of war goals, though. They call it Allied. I shall at least help stifle any sort of entrance into a country soon. Very quickly, at least. <clears throat> Alright. Oh, legitimate emperor. Oh! Oh, okay. We can't do that one yet. Oh, we demand the integration. Shandong is model province. Yeah, I don't want to wait. I mean, this is dumb. They need to give us something better than this to actually do this stuff. There they go. There's that one. So, what, like what I said earlier, I'm, the devs are just, they're special. I like what they do sometimes, but sometimes not really. Infiltrate the military. Though we may have had men, many men loyal to our cause and even nominal control of the empire, some of them among the former armies of the Zeli are not convinced. We must turn those who we can to our side and weaken those that we can't if we are to succeed. You know, they want to keep going to war with other people. I'm okay with that. As long as we get all the territory in the end. <coughs> Need more guns, though. Our territory's looking pretty good, though. Sure, guys. Sure. So far, doing well. I may want to only use horses for this stuff, too, eventually. I'll definitely take whatever we can from these guys. Also, just trying to boost up party popularity, just like using cons commands, doesn't work anymore. So, uh, it's all very funky. No, we're good. We are very good. Of course, supplies gonna be a massive problem. I may just retreat. Actually, honestly, most of these guys. So let's do this. I only want you wait up here. Supplies gonna be such a problem that it doesn't matter. If we lose a lot of the tanks, it'll be it. Whatever. Head down there just in case you... Oh, hello. Um, why did you give up that territory? I'm still taking probably that. And I'm taking at least one piece of territory. Ooh, army XP. Air XP. Um, bombers. We'll go with tactical bombers for this campaign. You got dang ding-dongs. Keep going on in if you can. Entrench the faith. Oh, go to work on me. Yeah, why not? That seems pretty good. We're trying to, try to build a supply base down there, too. More political power, more war support. Always good stuff. More stability. Nice. Secular influences. Returns authority to the center. Yeah. 
Social conservatism goes down. Return on third to the center. No. We all the seat of power in our empire. Many among the bureaucracy undoubtedly see the chaos following our ascension as an opportunity. We cannot let the mistake of the old administration repeat themselves. We must rest power for these opportunists, and there will be no new warlords under our watch. You god dang ding dong, stop doing that. My god. They are going to die. Whether you like it or not. Oh my god. Come on. Stop it with this. And that was been built, so we need to get some roads down there. Then, when, when we invade Hunan, it'll be really, hopefully, relatively smooth ish. Keep going, keep going. Not bad, not bad. Even though we literally have no supplies here. Oh boy. Oh boy. How's this looking? Lithuania's looking okay ish. Part of Switzerland was given up. Oh, there he's looking awkwardly big. Okay. How's the American Civil War going? PSA doing really well. We have the Black Revolt as well. The car is not doing very well, which makes sense. <clears throat> now we doing over here. I'm gonna send you guys back down south. It just supplies. It will be so bad. Infantry the military. We turn uh, authority to the center. How's he do? Some more army reforms. And then covert. Oh, an easy coalition. No, covert Baoding military districts. Oh, it's not bad. Loyal and devout military. Ooh, that'd be pretty good to do. Design new ships. Big swords assistance. That's kinda cool. Integrate the red spears. It's quite a bit of army organization, which does suck. Re-educate the Emperor. Dispatch missionaries. Ooh, you with least ability. I like that a lot. Uh Death of the Patriarch. Uh oh. The rigors of running a millennial in color are one thing, but the rigors of ruling an entire empire is as is one and only sovereign is an entirely different level of task. And such a task has taken its toll on our beloved Heavenly Emperor, Zheng Tianren, 18th Patriarch of the Yin Guangdao, and the reincarnation of both Yi Hai at the Bodhisattva of Moon Wisdom and Jigong. Honored teacher and our national father now lies ill as the ravages of stress and old age take him. As a side, uh, his matriarch of older and beloved wife, son, Su Shem, as well as his 12 other 12 children, pray for his recovery while also taking on the various aspects of statecraft while our national father once handled alone. With Zhang Tian's life so delicately in the balance, it's anyone's guess if he'll pull through or not. But preparations are already being made to hold him an illustrious state funeral as his aides prepared as crown son Xu Zhen, as the second sovereign of our heavenly empire and the first empress of China. What happens now is up to the heavens. Oh boy. Recovers? P passes. Uh, how about we recovers? I don't want to lose him yet. Soldiers forth. Armor trains are nice. Come over here and grab some of this too. Oh yeah, thanks guys. We appreciate it. Fall of Atlanta. For propaganda. <clears throat> See some of our PP. More horses. All right, at this point, this let them finish here, and they'll leave this area because they'll probably take it over anyways. So at the very least, I'm going to take probably this tile or something like that. we got to get at least something out of this, so. Uh, destroy secularist influences. Or settle in scheming aristocrats. The old aristocracy has always had a grudge against us as we took over, and we'll surely not have any missing opportunity to take over. We must therefore establish a rule free of any interference from these selfish nobles who refuse to pledge allegiance to us or who plot against us, and therefore indirectly against the emperor by any means necessary. And destroy secularist influences. Many critics of regime use religious fanaticism, as opposed to fall, and this will not do, especially since a great many of these groups have ties to the KMT and other opposition groups. Let us undermine their power and ensure our faith remains unsuppressed, or unsu unopposed. Pretty much. Keep building up them roads. Three for division is not bad, but gotta wait a little bit. 
All right, so we got plenty of political power. Um, I also live if I could draw some more, and then maybe do some more of this stuff too. That'd be good. I don't know why it just took so long. It doesn't make any sense. Ooh. Wow. Kind of awkward looking. Kind of ugly looking, not gonna lie. And the car is pretty much gone. The Black Revolt's doing relatively okay. American United States doing okay, but they're not doing well against... Like, do they have a piece of... Oh. Liberia. What's the capacitor? Yeah, they're kind of pieced out. Car. Oh, interesting. Alright, well, whatever. It's fine. Mm, anyone not politically connected? Oh boy. No, everyone's politically connected. How great. How, 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 how awesome. You guys, go trade too. Let them suffer all that attrition stuff, so. Um, nice. Legal reforms would be nice, but do that one and then dispatch missionaries. The Chinese people in their unwavering traditions are probably the oldest and most respectable in the world. However, nowadays people unfortunately tend to forget their faith and ancestral traditions, preferring ignoble ideologies such as liberalism or socialism both exported from the West. We mustn't uh, intensify the sending of missionaries throughout the country uh, to ensure our faith endures by all means. Whispers, oh, whispers among the Yi Guangdao. We're initially grateful to Zhang Tehran and the Yi Guangdao for the great support during our coup against the Baal's daily cliques and for the help in restoring the emperor to his rightful place. However, there are rumors of a possible plot by the Grand Master's followers to take power for themselves and place the Emperor's chosen government. Despite our concessions to the movement in order to thank them for their help, the religious sect seems unhappy to have played second fiddle to our government. Some of our ministers think that these rumors are true and probable and that we should not act as quickly as possible to prevent the coup before it's too late. Some of our ministers insist that these are only rumors that could very well have been spread by the Zili military officers to weaken the imperial power. Our government is very divided on what to do, but we must settle the matter quickly. Why do we get that? I don't understand why we get that. Like, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, th th this is all screwed up. It's just all screwed up. You know, I love what the devs can try to do, but it it's definitely shows that they're not they're not <laughs> this is not ready yet. Definitely not ready. Um, we drove what? Oh, oh there was a car. After that one, we dispatch missionaries. We educate the emperor and initiate legal reforms. Our policies are undoubtedly objectively good and morally virtuous for any self-respecting man, but we cannot run a country on common sense and morality alone. So we should put our practices and philosophy into a legal framework by creating a new constitution for a pious emperor of China that would define our practices and beliefs and make them clear to all our good citizens. Assimilate these guys. That's not bad. Secure rail nodes. Who buy landlordism. That's not bad, too. Reward royal industrious. Oh, yeah. Well, they take over the Qing Empire is no secret that a radical image would turn away many among these business owners and industrialists who have taken their assets with them. If we give privileges to those that remain, we can demonstrate a benevolence to them and they'll help us build a stronger China. But if you enjoyed the video, regardless, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below. Let me know if you've ever done this path and what your experience has been. And I'll see you tomorrow as we figure out what else we're going to do with Zeng Tianren. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.